What's up guys? Super stoked because today we are gonna install my brand new coilovers from ISC Suspension. I am really excited to do this. One, because we're going to a true coilover setup in the rear. Um, we're gonna walk through the install. I'm gonna do one front, one rear, show you guys how simple it is to do. We're gonna adjust the ride height for super, super, super slammed because, you know, stance is life. And um, yeah, I want to be able to barely drive over my Cali streets over here. So stay tuned. We're gonna do a step-by-step. -step. It's gonna be fun. I already went over this in a previous video when I did the unboxing, but just quickly overview what we have here for the installation. So here we have the adjustable base um, that comes separate um, that we will put on really quick for the fronts. These are the front coilovers here. Here we have the rear setup. And then we have the neoprene sleeves, um, the spanner wrenches, the adjustments for the valves, and yeah. So the tools for this installation are pretty basic. Um, you'll just need a 12, 14, 17, 21, some pliers, um, a flathead, and a lot of love. <laughs> My favorite ingredient. <laughs> So I've already done the annoying part, put the car on jack stands. We're gonna just jump right into the installation. So what is the, uh, uh. okay, I'm just gonna pop the hood real quick. If I can, if I know how to do that. Where's the, no. Oh. First things first, we're gonna go ahead and use the 14 mil to take off the strut brace so we can get access to the shock nuts. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna take the wheel off. I already broke um, the lug nuts loose. Just gonna use a 21 to take this off real quick. So first we're gonna take this cotter pin out so that we can get the upper control arm loose. Oh God. Okay, so after you get to a certain point, you can use the pliers kind of as a leverage tool. We're almost there. Bam. Next up, we're gonna take off this guy over here with the 17. Hopefully, um, this will just pop the ball joint off loose. I'm scared. <laughs> oh! So, next up, we're gonna just dismount these ABS lines and we're gonna take a 12 mil to take this, this guy off. So, we're gonna use a 12 to uh, take this guy off. Um, when I was trying to, when I'm trying to go down, it's actually bending this bracket. So since I don't have a little impact to just get this off, I'm just gonna literally do that and then bam, break it loose like that. Okay. Put this off to the side. I'm uh, gonna pop these brake lines off. These ones are easy. I'm just gonna wiggle this bad guy off. There we go. Lines are out of the way. Okay. okay. All right, what are you doing? Bust the nut. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah, that I had was to. Sweet, right? It was. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Right. Next, I'm gonna use my 12 mil to take off the shock nuts so we have a little bit more wiggle room. <laughs> Yep, since the impact didn't fit there, we're just gonna use the actual ratchet. Yep, that fits. Almost 
there. There we go. All done. So I am going to take the nut and bolt out of the bottom of the shock here. So we're going to use an open-ended 17 wrench and then an impact on this side. This is just to hold this in place. Okay, guys, it's hammer time. <laughs> My favorite time. We're just going to hammer this out. This is how, this is how I end up in the emergency room. Bam. Oh, okay. So now we're going to take this whole assembly out, which is going to just require some, you know, things. So I'm going to push this out of the way and okay. What? What's the name of the purpose of this stuff? So, um, I tried just taking this off from the top, which wasn't ideal for my fenders. Um, and I realized that wasn't exactly the most ideal way to do it. So, I am going to take a 17 to loosen up the sway bar so I can get more room with my control arm. So let's do that real quick. Bam. So now we're going to remove this whole thing. I can now push it down and get some more room that way so we're not hitting so much at the top. Bam. That's, that was a lot easier. Careful of the lines. Okay, it's out. So I took the ABS bracket and uh, brake line mount and I put it here on the adjustable base. And just to make sure that I'm putting it on the right side because it, it is different per side, I just matched it up to the factory setup. And just to see here, you can see that it's, it's fairly close. This bracket here is right here and then in the front and on this side, so very closely matches, so I think we're good. Okay, so we're just gonna put this on. Be careful. As far as it'll go. <laughs> so we're gonna put this on as far as it'll go. So I left my perches unlocked so I can still make some adjustments here. Um, but as you can tell, um, just visually, we're about three inches shorter already. So I'm going to be slammed AF. It's going to be sick. So we're going to go ahead and install this coilover. Um, we're going to bolt it down from the bottom. That way it'll be easier to line up at the top. But we're just going to do everything kind of loosely at first and then really tighten it up at the end. One thing to make sure is that when you're putting it, oops, we're going to just go ahead and put this in place. And we're going to make sure that the brake line right here is in front of the coilover because we need it in place. Okay. Then we're going to put the nut on by hand. Okay, now we are going to make sure that we have the brake lines and the ABS lines in place. Okay, that one. Sliding to a slit. Yeah, so you'll see this uh, gap right here it just goes onto these little prongs, I guess you could say. Dude, what in the hell? Okay. Okay, this should be a little looser now, so we can just spin this. Okay.
Okay, and we're just gonna tighten this up. Okay, we'll go ahead and tighten everything up. So, now that we have everything in place, we're gonna go ahead and jack this up and um, just line up the, the bolts up there so we can just tighten it up. So, we're gonna do this kind of slowly and carefully. Okay, okay, perfect. Now we will just hand tighten these. Again, we'll go back around and make sure everything's all snug. Bam, they're in place. Hard work is done. You know, as we were positioning the coilover in place, um, we wanted to make sure that the ball joint was being lined up too. So we're gonna go ahead and just tighten that up by hand again, right here. And then, wham, bam. So we're gonna take the 17 and just, um, we'll tighten that back up. We'll take that on an impact. Okay. Sweet. Um, since I'm a noob, I didn't get new cotter pins, so uh, learn from my mistakes and just get a new cotter pin. It's like really cheap. Done. One last step before we're all wrapped up here is that we're gonna make sure we put the sway bar end link back on and into place. Yeah. Hold on, use jack. Oh, right here. Okay. Make sure the washer is on there as well. Okay, and then we will take our 17. <laughs> All right, we are officially done. We're gonna just make sure we tighten everything up, put the wheel back on, and then we will set ride height. Okay, so I put some two by fours under the wheels. Um, because when I take the jack stands off and take it off onto the ground, um, the car's going to be really low and I don't think the jack is going to make it out under, from under the car. The jack stands are, yep. Grab them from the other side real quick. All right, guys, this is the moment of truth. Oh, I'm nervous. I'm scared. Let's see how low this is actually going to be. Let's try to do this low. Okay. Uh, we don't need this bumper. Oh, damn! <laughs> oh, my wheel fitment's awful, but dang, there's no room <laughs> under there. That's sick. Now that we are semi done with the front, we are gonna go to the rear, and hopefully, it's faster. Um, yeah. <laughs> So we'll just take off the wheel first. I already broke them loose. Um, the car is on the ground. Okay, that was very loose. These awful tires. So we're gonna take the 17 mil, um, loosen this up, and then we're gonna take out this spring bucket as well, and then we will drop everything. Oh God, that's how I strip things. I'm going to jack up this area, um, the shock, so that it's not under load so I can get the bolt out. 
so um, in order to get this bolt out, we need to make sure we get the load off of this right here. So I'm going to just jack it up really quick from the bucket just to get some of that, that tension off. And then we'll go ahead and pull this out. Tell us what you're doing. <laughs> I pulled the bolt out. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we're going to wait to do these top bolts until after we take this um, bolt out of the spring bucket. This is already uh, preloaded, so since we're down here, we're going to go ahead and just take this bolt out. So take the 17 so we can hold the nut on the other side, and then we will take it out. Um, okay, there we go. So um, since this is here, it's almost out. I'm just gonna go ahead and lower the jack very slowly and then we'll pull it out. Yep, there we go. Tension is off and it'll come off. I'm gonna lower this right here so I can take the spring out I have my stage hands um, lowering the <laughs> spring bucket for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's hammer time, guys. Um, so after you do that, you're just gonna pull this spring bucket down so you can take the spring out. Um, in the case that this isn't moving down to where you need it to go, there's a 17 mil on this bushing right here that you can loosen just to get more of this, this wiggle room. So, super easy. This is very dirty. Very, very dirty. Oh my gosh, there is a desert under my car now. Okay, all done here. Now we can go on to the top and we will take this off. We're gonna take the 12 mil now and take off these final bolts so that, that we could take the shock off and install the rear coilover. So it's kind of a tight fit, um, but it'll work. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Keep on going. Yeah. Dude, there's no way. I went ahead and got an extension. Uh, the proper way to do this instead of making my life hard. We can reach this a little bit easier. Oh, so much easier. Alrighty, we are taking it off, almost there. Bam. Okay, now we can take this off. Alrighty, we're gonna move this down. Okay. See, so much easier than the front. That was fast. All right, let's go ahead and put the new true coilover in. Now it's just gonna be one piece instead of two. So, before we install these, just a couple of things that I want to make note of. Um, ISC calls out that, you know, five millimeters of preload on the spring. Mine already came preloaded because I went with the triple S spring. So I didn't have to worry about that. You guys might want to look out for that in your installs. Um, another thing that I don't have today that I will do at a later time is take a hole saw or some sort of drill and drill on top inside my, inside my trunk so that way I can adjust the dampening. And um, since I can't do that today, I'm just gonna set it halfway to 32, so 16 clicks. What we're gonna do is just start on one end and then just count 16. So I'll go ahead and just turn it one way all the way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So that's halfway. Um, we're gonna go ahead and just install them like this. And then when we go testing um, in the future, we will play with the dampening a little bit more at that time. 
One thing I want to make a note of is that on the OEM base right here, they have a nut that's welded on. Um, since that isn't the case for the I ISC coilovers, they provide a nut that uh, is just going to go right here and it will, um, this is where the OE bolt will go through. So we'll go ahead and put everything into position and it should be fairly straight forward. So this is in place. We're going to put this on and then we will tighten it all up at the end, kind of like what we did last time on the front. Next step, we're going to put the bolt back into this bucket um, just to have everything in place and then we will lift everything into position. Yeah. 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 Okay. Bam. Okay, now we are going to use the jack to uh, push this whole assembly up so we can get the holes lined up with these bolts that are there. We'll put the nuts back on, tighten it back up, put the wheel back on, donezo. We're gonna go ahead and jack this up now from the bottom and so we can line up these holes with these bolts. We'll put on the nuts and we'll tighten everything up and we'll be good to go. Yeah, it's going through. Perfect. Okay, we're gonna get that all the way up, all the way as high as it could go. Okay, we're flush now. Alrighty, we went ahead and tightened everything up. Gonna put the wheel back on, drop the car, and see what the ride height is like. I am excited. We're almost at the finish line. So we just finished up the installation of the ISC coilovers. Super, super excited with how easy and fast that installation was. Hopefully you guys were able to follow along in the steps I provided. We were able to learn together through this process, but overall, very simple installation. I'm excited about the true rears that we went with. Um, it's really gonna help with the long-term game plan of this car. Um, and then after adjusting ride height and all of that, I'm excited to see what the car is gonna look like once we drop it on the ground. Um, other than that, the reason why I like ISC so much and why I decided to go with them is because it's function and form. Form is what we're really gonna focus on today. We're gonna get the ride height exactly where we want it, have the car looking how we want it. We want it slammed on the ground, almost undrivable. <laughs> and then we'll figure out the functional part of it once we go to a track day and then we can um, adjust damping. Damping? Not dabbing? Sidebar. I know I've been saying dampening the whole time because I say things wrong all the time. I know it's damping. Dampening is when you like make something moist with like a water gun, like squirt, squirt. So it's damping, okay? Ignore me, flame me in the comments, whatever. All right guys, moment of truth. We're gonna take everything out from underneath the car. We're gonna drop the jack and see what the final form is like. I'm so excited. Okay, so make sure the wood is out from both sides real quick. Then we're gonna take the jack stands out. Jack stands out from this side. Okay, guys, it's happening. It's happening. Oh, okay. It did get stuck. Did it? No. Oh my gosh. Okay, we need to fix the wheel fitment. But other than that, That's not even a whole thing. I can't even. Once we get that wheel fitment right, we're not gonna be able to fit any fingers. That's exactly what I want. <laughs> oh, this is good. This is good. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I honestly wasn't expecting the coilovers to be able to give it this much of a drop. 
I know that they said it would, but it's really cool to see it in person because this is exactly what I'm gonna, the look I was going for. I know that uh, we still have some aesthetic things to address, um, like wheel fitment, and maybe we'll throw some spacers on there until we figure out our wheel and tire game. And of course, we're gonna be um, adding in a, a body kit, so it'll give it a different look. But right now, it's dumped, and I'm pretty stoked for that because this is <laughs> in my in my past life, I was definitely a hot boy. So we're getting back to my roots. <laughs> gonna do some quick ride height adjustments so I can at least try to make it out of the driveway, but. Yeah, wish me luck guys, it's gonna be a fun one.